Hey guys, Mitch here. Uh, so this one's going to be about uh, rendering UMG widgets into stereo layers using only blueprints. Uh, so a little bit of background before we get into it. Uh, UMG is UE4's way to render uh, 2D UI just using blueprints. It's really nice to work with uh, for blueprints and stuff like that, and it beats Slate, the C++ component of it. So UMG is great at uh, 2D UIs. Um, it's really nice for that kind of stuff, but there was a problem with it when it was introduced around the 4.3 era, uh, where it was only really used for headlocked UI, like UI that was rendered in screen space instead of world space. So to fix that, Epic created the widget component, which is a way to render UMG, UMG widgets into a 3D space. And this is really cool because it defeats a lot of the problems with headlocked UI. Uh, there are a few other problems with it though that can be solved with what is called stereo layers. So with normal 3D UMG widgets, they're rendered onto static mesh components in the world, uh, but that means they're affected by post-processing things like Bloom and stuff like that, or even the resolution that the game's played at, which in VR, because performance is so important, you may want to lower the resolution so you can up the frame rate on things like lower than min spec computers and stuff like that. And then with 3D widgets though, they will be affected by that new low resolution which is not what we want because we want the UI and stuff like that to always be the highest resolution possible. And so that's what these overlays or um, VR layers solve, is they're independent of the game's resolution because they're rendered straight to the head mounted display. All right, so before we get into um, the actual making this work compatibility between these stereo layers and the 3D widgets, um, this video isn't gonna be about how to use 3D widget interaction exactly because there's already pretty good documentation over on Epic's website. Uh, so I'll leave a link to this in the description, but it's basically how to create 3D widgets in UE4. Uh, it just goes on about creating widget interaction components and then 3D widgets and UMG and stuff like that. So the project I'm starting from is uh, pretty much just like that. I have a UMG widget called menu, which has uh, just a couple of menu buttons, like a start button, a quality uh, combo box, and an end button. So they don't actually do anything, they're just there for visual display so we can see what's up. I also have a uh, menu pollen, which um, just has the menu, widget interaction, motion controllers, and a camera. Nothing else really fancy about it. And it just interacts with menus. And again, these are just uh, exactly the same to what you'll find in this tutorial on Epic's documentation. All right, so to get into actual content, so first things first, we'll create a blueprint class from actor and name it BP underscore menu actor. And this is what's gonna hold our 3D UMG widget as well as our stereo layer. So here, the menu um, UMG uh, is defined in 2D basically. And so what we'll do is in this menu actor, we'll grab a widget. And now this is a 3D widget. So then we can select the, oh, give me one sec, I'll just make this appropriate size. And then so we can select the widget class. So here we'll select the menu that I created before this. And all the source for this will be in the description. So if you want to follow along, feel free to grab that source before we do it. And so one thing to note with this menu is the resolution up here, I'll just make it a little bit easier to work with, sorry, 1000 by 1000. Um, that's quite high for UMG, this 1000 by 1000. And that's simply because we're going to scale it down in the editor because um, these represent in world space one unreal unit, which is one centimeter. So here it's going to be 10 meters by 10 meters, which is a lot, but uh, we'll scale it down, which will give us the highest resolution possible. So if we go into blueprints, menu actor here, you notice that's cut off. That's because our draw size is wrong. So we need a thousand by a thousand. And now just to show you how big it is, I can throw it in the world and go around and this is massive. Um, so to deal with this, we'll just bring it back down to 0.1, which basically means it's a meter by a meter, which is good because when we add our stereo layer, by going add component stereo layer, 
by default, the stereo layer is in fact stereo layer is in fact one meter by one meter as well. So then these two match up, which is good, because basically what we're going to be doing is taking this UMG widget, and then instead of rendering it to the screen, we're going to render it into the stereo layer itself. So to do that, there's a couple of things we need to do. So first of all, uh, this widget I'm going to turn around 180 degrees. Uh, simply because stereo layers face down the negative x-axis while widgets face down the positive x. So just to make sure they align, I'm just going to rotate this widget 180 degrees. Um, that's cool, cool. So now we need to render this widget into the stereo layer. And thankfully that's pretty easy. So we're going to go on event tick here. And I'm going to show you why we do that in a second. So I'm going to drag off. Um, sorry, rather, I'm going to drag this widget into it, and then I'm going to get, if we go down here to user interface, uh, we'll see the render target, which is actually the uh, 2D texture that this widget renders into when it's rendering the UI. So the good thing about that is then we can grab this stereo layer, and we can go set texture, and this is where we can manually set the texture that is going to be displayed on that stereo layer. So we just pass this texture straight in, it should work. Uh, one thing that I'm going to do here is going to be a little bit funky, and I'll explain why in a sec. So I'm going to grab this widget, and I'm going to go is valid. And this, no, sorry, no, not that widget either. I'm going to grab this render target and go is valid. And this basically says is the render target actually created and actually a proper. Um, render target that has stuff in it. And then if that's true, I'm going to do once. And then I'm going to set the texture. And why we do this and why we don't just do this set texture at begin play is because when begin play is, is uh, run, the texture may not be created yet. And so to com combat this, we'll, every tick, we'll see it has the texture being created yet. If it has, then we'll set the texture on the stereo layer and only set it once. So this means we're not setting it every tick, we're just setting it once the texture is actually rendered and is valid. So one other thing I'm gonna do with the stereo layer is I'm, I'm gonna tick live texture because our UMG widgets, we can interact with them and we can change hover states and stuff like that, we can change colors. So I just wanna make sure that this updates its texture every tick. Now the next thing we need to deal with is the um, actual placing of this stereo layer. Because if I grab this now, and I, it's already in the world, that's good. And I place it here and I click the play button. Um, we will notice that my entire screen is white, which is annoying. But and then why is that? Okay, so basically at the moment, Right like this, um, our menu actor. This stereo layer is face locked, meaning that it is locked to the user's face. And so we can see that even better if I move this a little bit backwards so out here and I click play again. You'll notice that the stereo layer is locked to my face, whereas the UMG widget is still in the world. So we obviously don't want that, so I'll just move this back here. And then what we really want is the world, is the stereo layer to be world locked. So it's exactly where it is. Unfortunately though, if we have a little gander at the code here, you'll notice that the world locked code has been commented out because it's not finished yet, which is annoying. So we'll have to work around this. So this world locked doesn't work. So we can do tracker locked. And basically that means that it'll be locked to the real world tracker of the um, Vive or Rift or something like that. What's the, what this translates for us is that it will actually be locked to the initial location of the player pawn or the root component of the player. And so to deal with this, um, we're going to, on begin play, we're gonna get the actor transform 
and then we're gonna get the player uh, pawn and we're gonna get their active transform because what we need to do is we need to set the relative location of this stereo layer which is the location relative to the world to your tracking origin in your real world and we're going to have to offset this to exactly where this menu is in world space and i'm simply going to do this on event play here just because um, i'm envisioning this as a menu so it won't really move during play but if your menu does move you might have to do this on tick and so to um, make this relative to the um, player first things we need to do is just go relative so convert transform to relative and what this will do is it will mean that we can grab this stereo layer and we can set the relative transform of it and this will mean on begin play, the stereo layer will be, the world position of the stereo layer will be converted into the proper relative position of the player. So this will basically convert it from tracker locked to be world locked. And again, you can do this on tick if you need to do it as the um, stereo layer moves. But hopefully, hopefully, um, Epic will eventually implement World Locked, so then it'll be simple as just selecting World Locked instead of Tracker Locked. Okay, so now we have this sorted, we have the texture, and we have this in World Space. And before we just click play and see what's going on, I'll need to do one thing. Um, I just need to put our actual poem that I created beforehand in the level, and then we'll auto possess it. This will just mean that the origin is correct. So then if we click play, you'll notice that um, you can only see one menu. And this is a little bit of a, a trick because it's actually two menus and they're just on top of each other. So to solve this where we don't wanna see the other menu at all because uh, we'll have this layered on top so we don't want them fighting with each other. And so to fix this, we'll have a little look in the menu first. Okay, so we don't want the uh, widget to be visible, but there's one problem. If we unselect visible here, then it will no longer be rendered, which means it'll no longer be rendering to the render target, which means our stereo layer will no longer be visible as well. So you can see that here, if I uh, unclick visible here and I play again, it's all gone, which is sad. Uh, same thing too, if we click hidden in game, it'll do a similar thing. So there's one little hacky workaround we can do here. So what I'll do is I'll go into materials. I'll create a new material called M underscore widget invisible. There we go. And it's going to be really simple. We're just going to grab this um, material and then make it uh, masked and make it unlit and grab a... Uh, I just clicked one and clicked there to get a single scalar value, or you can right click and get a scalar parameter. Um, so here, if we go one, and then that's the emissive color, and then I'm gonna click one and click again, and zero for the mask, and that means it's invisible. And then we're gonna go into here, blueprint here, grab the widget, and simply select, oh, that's not what we want simply select our invisible material, which means that widget's no longer visible, as you can see here, but it's still being rendered into the render target. So if I click play, and then we show here, and then it still works. And then one quick reason, so the reason why we actually did lay, um, line these two up, the serial layer and the widget, is because now that they're lined up, it'll still, the interaction will still actually work. So if I just pop on my rift here and I hit play and I grab my controllers, you'll see that the interaction still works perfectly fine. So I can click, I can do this, do that, and everything works fine. That's a stereo layer. As you can see by it's actually um, going on top of this uh, little pointer here. So, 
So the um, interaction works just because we lined up those two uh, widgets here. So I think that's about it for the uh, this video. Um, if, you have, if you have any questions or comments or whatever, leave them below. Um, if you want to support me or whatever, um, feel free. Or you want to learn more about UE4, I just released a book on UE4 and Unreal Engine and VR. Um, so feel free to grab that. Um, again, link in the description. But yeah, I think that's it. Uh, see you guys later.